Assalamu alaikum everybody. How are you all? Uh, okay. So this is the second last lecture while we are discussing drugs acting on the gonadal and reproductive system. Wait, I have messages. Uh, okay, good, Mehek. All right. So, <clears throat> all right. So uh, today we will be discussing hormonal contraceptives. As the name indicates, contraceptive is a drug which prevents pregnancy in a woman, right? So when we are talking about hormonal contraceptives, that means uh, these are the drugs which are hormonal and these would prevent uh, pregnancy in a lady. All right. Moving on. So... In today's lecture, when we are discussing about the hormonal contraceptive, we will talk about the oral contraceptives. All right. In oral contraceptives, again, there are two kinds. That is combination pills and then progestin only preparations. Then we have progestin injections. Then we have subcutaneous progestin implants. Then we have intrauterine devices. And then we have postcoital oral contraceptives. So one by one, we'll discuss all of these. Starting with oral contraceptives, where we'll discuss combination pills and progestin-only preparations, which are also called mini pills. So when we talk about combination pills, so they contain mixture of estrogens and progestin. The estrogen component, which is uh, 20 to 50 micrograms per day is either ethanol, estradiol, or mistranol. So, mistranol is metabolized to ethanol, estradiol. It is combined with progestin, which is 0 0.05 to 2.5 mg per day, such as norethendrone, norgastrol. Livon nor gestrel, nor ethendrone acetate, ethyno diol diacetate, drospiridone or desogestrel. So combination pills reduce the level and cyclicity of both luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, resulting in failure to ovulate. If you remember uh, from that diagram which I showed to you earlier when we uh, discussed how exactly these two act. Okay. Uh, then we have combination pills. Combination pills are typically taken continuously for 21 days followed by a 7 day withdrawal or placebo period to induce menses. Biphasic or triphasic formulations which try to mimic the endogenous ratio of estrogen and progestin are available. So you see, it is uh, being done in order to mimic the cycle of a woman. All right, then is continuous dosage products are available that contain ethanol estradiol and livo nor gastro gastrol and are taken every day for 84 days followed by seven days of inert tablet or seven days of low dose ethanol estradiol in bracket is the market name thus producing four menstrual periods per year so liberal contains the same hormones taken continuously for 365 days to suppress menstruation completely. So obviously when a woman will not go through the cycle, she will not be able to reproduce. So these pills also affect the genital tract in ways that are unfavorable for conception, such as thickening of cervical mucus, speeding ovum transport through the fallopian tube, and making the endometrium less favorable for 
implantation right everybody okay why if you look over here speeding i'm sure thickening and less favorable you all can understand but i'm just trying to reinforce for those who have forgotten that in the fallopian tube fallopian tube is actually the site of fertilization okay so when a ovum would go through the fallopian tube with a very fast speed so obviously it will have a hard time to fertilize okay all right then we have mini pills so progestin only oral preparation contain nor ethindrone these preparations are taken daily on a continuous schedule progestin only preparations do not completely suppress ovulation resulting in irregular fertile periods they are not as effective as combination preparation the mechanism of contraception is unclear but it is likely due to formation of a relatively atrophic endometrium which impairs implantation and viscous cervical mucus breakthrough bleeding is as high as 25% so adverse effects are cardiovascular first of all we'll discuss what effects adverse effects on heart will be produced so oral contraceptives are associated with two fold to four fold increase in morbidity or mortality due to myocardial infarction this may be age dependent the incidence of hypertension is 3 to 6 times higher among women taking oral contraceptive neha salim can you please erase this thank you okay so other adverse effects are it produce a remarked increase up to 50% in triglyceride levels depending on the relative doses of estrogens and progestin in the individual preparation the risk of cardiovascular complication increases remarkably in women over age 35 and in women who smoke wait please okay so other adverse effects are uh thromboembolic diseases again that is related to the blood so the risk of a stroke is 2 to 10 times higher in individuals taking oral contraceptives estrogens increase levels of fibrinogen and coagulation factors while decreased concentration of antithrombin 3 so antithrombin 3 is actually a protein which blocks the blood from clogging wait please excuse me okay so you see estrogen level it is doing two things at a time right it is increasing the coagulation factor and it is decreasing the anticoagulants right that means the stroke risk will be really high because the uh, clots can form in the capillaries and blockages can be there then we have genito urinary tract adverse effects so oral contraceptives reduce the incidence of ovarian and endometrial cancer they also reduce the incidence of pelvic uh, inflammatory disease okay then we have on the liver so oral contraceptive increase the incidence of gall bladder disease and gall stones and other adverse effects which are like extremely prominent actually are weight gain edema breast tenderness headache mood alteration breakthrough bleeding and amenorrhea on discontinuation 
these medicines are in contraindicated in the patients who already have a cardiovascular disease, who already have thromboembolic disease, estrogen dependent or estrogen responsive cancer, impaired liver function, undiagnosed bleeding, and migraine. When I was in Form D, what I used to do was I used to memorize adverse effects. And obviously, when, ad, for example, if you look here, adverse effect is causing stroke, right? So obviously, it should be contraindicated in patients who have a stroke. So this is one way to memorize because I can totally understand it takes a, a lot of memory to memorize all of the drugs and their actions and everything. Okay, then we have progestin injections. So we have one very famous disinjection, which is, uh, wait, which is medroxy progesterone acetate, and it is available in as a suspension for subcutaneous or intramuscular injection. So this preparation provides contraception for three months. One very common uh, adverse effects uh, I, I should mention here is the weight gain. So that's why a lot of ladies actually try to avoid it. Okay, then we have subcutaneous progestin implants. So if you look here, I don't know if it's, I, 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 I hope it's visible to you that there's this one line. Okay, so basically inside the skin, okay, at the angle of 30 degree, they actually insert this implant, okay? So, implantin is a synthetic progestin uh, surrounded by a biometric coating. A single rod is placed under the skin and provides effective contraception for up to three years. Actual effectiveness is superior to that of combination oral contraceptives. This is very important. Rods must be removed after three years. Otherwise, inflammation can happen or allergic reactions can happen. All right. So adverse effects are dominated by menstruation and bleeding irregularities. Then we have, uh, again, very famous among women, intrauterine device. This is this. This is a device which is inserted inside the woman, okay? And if you look here, it actually blocks the pathway of the fallopian tube, okay? So we have levonorgestrel containing IUDs are available as a means of contraception. Contraception is achieved mostly by local action on the endometrium with hypertrophic glands and pseudo decidulation. So if you look here, I actually placed this uh, diagram for you. So uh, this word is actually, you can break this word into two. Okay, pseudo, and then you have decidualization. So decidualization is actually thickening of the endometrium, thickening of the wall, okay? And pseudo is fake, okay? So basically thickening of wall happens when a lady conceives, okay? When a baby, uh, when the zygote get, starts to implant and all, okay? So this is fake. Okay, this is happening without the purpose. That's why it's called pseudo. Okay, so this happens. This is uh, this happens because of the contraception. Okay, so ovulation occurs in about fifty percent of menstruation cycles. These devices should be implanted by a trained physician. Uh, I tell you, uh, uh, I'm not sure in which year, but I read article that uh, certain ladies actually when it started, so certain ladies started to have depression because it was not placed properly. And when they used to walk, they would uh, have trouble. And because of that, they developed extreme levels of anxiety and depression. And it can be really lethal if uh, it's not inserted by a trained physician. Okay, then we have postcoital oral contraceptive 
So we have two ways. Plan A, which is 100 to 120 microgram of ethanol estradiol with 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 milligram of levonorgestrel <coughs> taken twice, 12 hours apart, has been found very effective if taken within 72 hours of coitus. At least 18 oral contraceptive preparation contain these two drugs. Your other uh, plan could be that a person takes 0 0.75 milligram of liver or gastrol within 72 hours after unprotected intercourse. One dose taken as soon as possible and a second must be taken 12 hours after the initial dose. So uh, one step is one 1.5 milligram dose of liver or gastrol and is usually effective. Nausea and vomiting are common and can be severe. The risk of cancer in female offspring precludes this treatment if pregnancy is suspected. That is it everybody. Thank you so much.